welcome all of you to this uh, webinar which is organized by the Center for Ecumenical, Missiological and Ecological Studies and its Master of Orthodox Ecumenical Theology. This uh, webinar is part of a series of webinars on the unity of the One Church of Christ. My name is Odair Pedroso Mateus. I'm uh, speaking to you from Geneva, from the headquarters of the World Council of Churches. I'm Deputy General Secretary of the World Council of Churches and Director of its Commission on Faith and Order. And the topic uh, speaks a lot to our ecumenical concerns in the WCC. And for this reason, I'm very thankful for the invitation to be with you today and facilitate uh, this conversation on this important theme. Today's topic is timely in at least three different ways. First of all, of course, we are approaching Easter. In Western Christianity, we we'll celebrate one week before Eastern Christianity. And in this sense, it's uh, uh, an important, uh, a good moment to, to discuss uh, uh, today's uh, topic. The second one is that the dream of uh, reaching an agreement on uh, the date uh, of the celebration of this foundational feast in our, in our tradition is very much an ecumenical, has a strong ecumenical uh, dimension, the common witness to a central element of our faith. And the third uh, element that makes it very timely is the fact that we are quickly approaching 2025 and uh, we'll be celebrating the 1700 anniversary of the first ecumenical council that is so much connected with the question of the date of Easter. And you certainly know in that year, Easter will be celebrated on the same day. And this adds significance, uh, ecumenical spiritual significance to uh, this matter, and we are all excited as we embark on the preparations for that. For all these reasons, once again, uh, uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, good to, to be able to be together for this uh, webinar. Let me tell you briefly how we'll proceed uh, today. We'll have then uh, a keynote speech uh, initially by Archbishop uh, Dr. Job of Telmesos. He will speak for 30 minutes. Uh, Archbishop uh, Job holds several professorships in uh, the areas of liturgical theology, ecumenism, and orthodox spirituality, in which he has published extensively. He's also the co-moderator of the Orthodox Roman Catholic Dialogue, the International Orthodox Roman Catholic Dialogue, as well as the representative of the Ecumenical Patriarchate to the World Council of Churches in, uh, in Geneva. After Archbishop uh, uh, Job, uh, we'll have two uh, 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 responses. Uh, uh, the first one, hopefully, we hope that Metropolitan Vasilius of Constantia and Amohostos will be uh, will, with us. He's a faculty of, of this master program. He's a former moderator of the Commission on Faith and Order uh, of the World Council of Churches. And we have also comments from Professor Petros Vasiliadis uh, from uh, CIMIS, Professor of New Testament, Missiology and Ecumenism. After that, we will be able to have a, a, a moment of questions and answers. So if 
this is uh, agreeable, we can move now and uh, welcome uh, Archbishop uh, Job of Delmasus. Thank you so much, Odair, and thank you so much to the organizers from uh, CIMIS for inviting me to speak to you this afternoon on this very important uh, topic, uh, the common celebration of Pascha and the Eastern-Western Christian relations. The first point I want to make is that the ecumenical dimension of the common celebration of Pascha is not something new. It's not something that is just arising now uh, between ourselves. But actually, this question has a long history. It was already raised at the beginning of the 20th century in the patriarchal and synodal encyclical of ecumenical patriarch uh, Joachim III. It was raised again in 1920 by the encyclical of the ecumenical patriarchate onto the churches of Christ everywhere. It was discussed in 1923 at the pan-Orthodox meeting in Constantinople convened by ecumenical patriarch Meletius IV. It was discussed on Mount Athos at the monastery of Vatopedi at the inter-Orthodox pre-Synod of 1930. It came again at the first pan-Orthodox Conference of Rhodes, convened by ecumenical patriarch Athenagoras in 1961. It was discussed at the first preconciliar pan-Orthodox Conference uh, in Champézy in 1976. And then there was a proposal prepared by a meeting of Orthodox astronomers in Champézy in 1977, and then following that 20 years after you have the Aleppo meeting of faith and order, um, the consultation of the World Council of Churches. So let's see a little bit all these uh, steps which connect us to the beginning of the previous century. The very first, the very first mention of this question is, as I said, in the a patriarchal and synodal encyclical of Joachim III. I read here a brief paragraph taken from this encyclical. Worthy of no less attention, in our opinion, is the question of a common calendar, already for some time spoken and written about, especially proposed methods of reforming the Julian calendar, which has prevailed in the Orthodox Church for centuries or the acceptance of the Gregorian. The former is more def defective scientifically, the later more exact, considering also the change of our ecclesiastical Easter after the necessary agreement. In the studies on this topic, we see that the opinions which are held by Orthodox who have made a special investigation of it are divided. Some of them consider our ancient inheritance as alone fitting in the church, having been handed down from the fathers and always having had the church's authority. Not only do they think that there is very little need for change, but they would rather avoid it for the reasons which they elaborate. Others, champions of the Westerners' calendar and its introduction by us, suggest the greatest possible chronometric accuracy, or even the new usage of uniformity, and they advocate the practice of the Western Church as being reasonable, perhaps in expectation of possible religious benefits in their own opinion. So in our times, the discussion has been intensified, various and stimulating assertions being propo uh, pr uh, pr uh, propounded by either side, both of a scientific or of a religious nature on both of which in some Orthodox countries, a certain inclination is evident of adherence to the notion of changing our Orthodox calendar or of some reform of it. And in as much as this question for all its obvious scientific form has an ecclesiastical importance, 
it seems right to us to exchange with the older Orthodox churches the relevant information in order that on this too a common mind might be reached among them and a single opinion and decision of the whole Orthodox Church expressed. For to her alone belongs the judgment on this matter and the research, if necessary, for a way of uniting, so far as it possible, the hoped for scientific accuracy with the desired maintenance of hallowed ecclesiastical decrees. So you see, the discussion is very old. Now, in 1920, the encyclical of the ecumenical patriarchate on the churches of Christ everywhere, which uh, seems, um, which always has been regarded as the prophetic encyclical for the creation of what will be called in 1948, the World Council of Churches, also addresses the question of calendar and common celebration of great Christian feasts. We read there. For if the different churches are inspired by love and place it before everything else in their judgments of others of their relationships with them, instead of increasing or widening the existing dissensions, they should be enabled to reduce and diminish them. By starting up a right brotherly interest in the condition, the well-being and stability of other churches, by readiness to take an interest in what is happening in those churches and to obtain a better knowledge of them, and by willingness to offer mutual aid and help, many good things will be achieved for the glory and the benefit both of themselves and of the Christian body. In our opinion, such a friendship and kindly disposition towards each other can be shown and demonstrated particularly in the following ways. And the example number one, is by the acceptance of a uniform calendar for the celebration of the great feasts at the same time by all the churches. So here we are, the common celebration of major Christian feasts all together. The Pan-Orthodox meeting in Constantinople convened by Ecumenical Patriarch Meletius IV revised the Julian calendar. And this revision was made and proposed and accepted by a Serbian scientist, very known, very well known in the scientific world, uh, Milutin Milankovic, who proposed a reform of the uh, Julian, a revision of the Julian calendar in October 1923. Uh, his astronomic revision. Uh, is more precise than the Gregorian one. And therefore, according to his calculations, uh, the two calendars, uh, the Gregorian one and the, what we can call the Milanovic calendar or the revised Julian calendar or the new calendar, uh, would co coincide between March 1600 until February 2800. But after then, there will be the, the Gregorian uh, calendar uh, would be behind astronomic reality. I won't go into the technical details because these are very complicated. After this meeting of 1923, two local Orthodox churches have accepted Milanovic's proposal. This is the Apostolic Orthodox Church of Estonia and the Orthodox Church of Finland, who adopted the new calendar, both for the uh, fixed uh, feasts of the year, such as Christmas, but also for the determination of the date of Easter. The Ecumenical Patriarchate, the Church of Cyprus, and the Church of Greece, switched to the new calendar in March 1924 only for the fixed feasts, but not for the date of Pascha. And their move was followed in October 1924 by the Orthodox Church of Poland and the Orthodox Church of Romania, and then in October 1928 by the Patriarchate of Alexandria and the Patriarchate of Antioch. In 1937, 
the Orthodox Church of Albania also switched to the revised Julian calendar for the, its for the fixed feasts, and in 1968, the Church of Bulgaria did the same. During the meeting, the pre-synod at Vatopedi in 1930, uh, which discussed the possibility of convening a holy and great council of the Orthodox Church, this uh, Orthodox consultation, inter-Orthodox consultation, has determined a first list of 17 topics that ought to be discussed at the holy and great council. And among the questions, that they saw as being important to be discussed on the council's agenda was the calendar issue. Then in 1961, the first Pan-Orthodox Conference of Rhodes uh, has prepared a very wide catalog of several topics that ought to be discussed at the Holy and Great Council of the Orthodox Church. The long list of topics fell into eight categories. And uh, among them, you can see questions of worship and church order, number two and three. And among these issues of worship and church order was the issue of the revision of the calendar and of the common date of Pascha. In 1976, the first pre-conciliar pan-Orthodox conference in Chambézy that started the, prep the actual preparation of the Holy and Great Council and the reduction of its documents reduced the uh, Council's agenda because the previous agenda from the first Pan-Orthodox Conference was uh, considered as being too wide and they reduced it to 10 major topics and among the 10 major topics that ought to be discussed at the Holy and Great Council. You can see number five, the questions of the calendar and the common celebration of Easter. So what is the problem? Why we don't have a common date of Easter? As Odair uh, said it uh, at the very beginning in the introduction of today's seminar, the definition of the date of Easter uh, was uh, a decision of the first ecumenical council, the Council of Nicaea I in 325. This first ecumenical council has decided that Christians ought to celebrate uh, Pascha, Easter, on the same day, which is the first Sunday following after the full moon after the spring equinox. So until today, from the first ecumenical council until today, all Christians, both Eastern and Western, follow the same rule, follow the same definition. But how come do we come to different dates of Easter? Well, the reason is that the Orthodox Church with the exception of the Orthodox Church in Finland today, all the other Orthodox churches for the determination of the date of Easter uh, follow the Julian calendar. And if you follow the Julian calendar, the spring equinox doesn't fall on March 21st, according to the Gregorian calendar, but falls on April the 3rd, according to the Gregorian calendar. There is 13 days of um, the, the, the Julian calendar is 30 days be, uh, beyond, be, behind uh, the astronomic reality. Also, for uh, determining the date of the full moon, we do not use the orthodox, the astronomic data that we have today, but we use all the Paschalian tables. So as you can see, there is here an example of a Paschalian table, which gives you all the possible dates for Easter. Um, in order to determine this date, you uh, need, first of all, to use the uh, Byzantine uh, year, 
uh, which uh, is uh, has uh, 5,508 years more than our uh, calculation of the years from so-called nativity of Christ, first of all. And then these tables uh, use a fictional monk called the Mount of Methon, according to which uh, in 19 Earth years, there are exactly 235 lunar months. And each year is assigned a number in a 20 year solar cycle. So here you have the numbers of the 20 year solar cycle uh, uh, at the top, on the right top. And then on uh, the extreme left, you have the 19 uh, cycles uh, of um, the, um, uh, uh, for the uh, lunar months. So in order to determine the date, for example, of Pascha in 2022, this year, you must add 5,508 in order to have the Byzantine year of 7,530, uh, so-called from Adam, from the creation of the world. Then uh, in order to have the number of the, um, uh, uh, of the of the line from one to nineteen, you have to divide this uh, year by nineteen, uh, so it gives you three hundred ninety six and remains six. So you will read the sixth line, but in order to know which column, uh, you know you have to have the uh, solar um, uh, cycle. So you have to divide the year seven thousand five hundred thirty by 28, which gives you 268 and remains 26. So on the sixth line, you have to go until the colon where you have the number 26. So you arrive here, which says 11th of April. So to this year, in this year, 7,530, uh, Pascha Easter will be on April 11th, according to uh, the Julian calendar, which is in the according to the Gregorian calendar, uh, April 24. So this year the Orthodox will celebrate April 24. Now the Westerners use the astronomical data to determine the e date of Easter. The spring equinox this year was on March 20. Uh, the full moon, the first full moon appearing after March 20 is on Saturday, April the 16th. And then the first Sunday following after the full moon is the Sunday, April 17th. So uh, the Westerners celebrate the April 17th as the Orthodox celebrate uh, April 24. Uh, so this year there is one week of difference. So you can see that both Westerners and Easterners, both Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox use the same rule, the same definition from Nicaea, but doesn't use the same tools. And of course, the tools that the Orthodox use are uh, be, being behind the, the astronomic reality. So uh, in preparation of the Holy and Great Council, since the question of the revision of the calendar and the question of the common celebration of Easter was raised, um, the Orthodox this, were aware that we must uh, upgrade uh, our tools because the rule is the same, but the difference is uh, due to uh, uh, tools that are behind the astronomic reality. So there was a meeting of Orthodox astronomers, which was gathered in Champbezier, the, uh, of the, uh, the Orthodox Center of the Ecumenical Patriarchate in 1977. And this meeting of astronomers, first of all, recommended to stick to the rule of the first ecumenical council. So we do not ought to change the definition of the first ecumenical council but we want to stick to it, to remain faithful to it. 
But the astronomers observed that the, there is an inaccuracy in the Julian calendar. Since the solar cycle is 30, 13 days behind, and the full moon, uh, as it has been calculated in the past, is now five days behind the astronomic reality. The um, astronomers also discussed the question of the Jewish Passover. They discussed the, the question of the Orthodox diaspora. Uh, the question in the Orthodox diaspora, you know, it's a, there is a pastoral need for uh, this revision because in the diaspora, we have a lot of mixed marriages and we have also a lot of converts. So the Orthodox are living very much in, 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 in connection with the Western Christians. And it's very uh, much faithful uh, to have, um, not being able to have a common celebration, especially when part of your family is Lutheran or Roman Catholic. And it's also a question linked to Christian unity. And this is why we are here today to discuss it. So the astronomers in Chambézy in 1977 proposed a new Pascalian, new tables, uh, as you can see from the book that has been uh, from the, uh, from, uh, uh, the, the acts of this meeting. You, you can see that there was a new Pascalian proposed and they based their calculation on the meridian of Jerusalem, the place of the resurrection of Christ. And 20 years later, there was a consultation being made by the World Council of Churches in Aleppo in Syria in 1997 um, about the common celebration of Easter and the conclusions of this meeting uh, is very much in the same spirit as the meeting of the Orthodox astronomers in Chambézy 1977. Uh, the consultation of the World Council of Churches recommended to follow the rules of the First Ecumenical Council, uh, being that Easter should always fall on the Sunday after the first full moon of spring. They also suggested that for the calculation of astronomical data, that is to say the date of the spring equinox and the date of the full moon, uh, to use accurate scientific data. And in order to calculate this data, that the meridian of Jerusalem be used since it is the place of the death and resurrection of Christ. So this is what I intended today uh, to share with you uh, and uh, I now propose uh, that we can open our discussion. Thanks a lot, Job, for this uh, very detailed, accurate overview of the of the discussion and the amazing explanations about <laughs> the methods uh, uh, used, especially in, in the um, in the old uh, in the old system. I'm wondering whether we have Metropolitan Vasilius with us. Could anybody let me know? If not, we would move to Professor Petrus Vasiliadis for his comments on the contribution made by Archbishop Job. Uh, Your Eminence, you have uh, uh, presented uh, so accurately the whole issue. And uh, allow, me, allow me to connect it, what you said, uh, to the main theme, as um, Odair has uh, said at the beginning, that uh, this uh, present presentation lecture, open public lecture, uh, is within the series of uh, the uh, project we have uh, 
developed uh, together with the Angelicum um, uh, institution uh, and also with Catholics uh, um, and also Eastern uh, Greek Catholics uh, uh, trying to find uh, ways to go forth to the unity of the one Church of Christ. And as you said, uh, this is exactly what uh, um, uh, your presentation uh, focused on. Uh, my comment uh, uh, will be very short, uh, if I try to be as brief as possible, uh, trying to explain the reasons behind this, uh, uh, I would say, concern or difficulty of the Orthodox uh, trying to be in agreement with the decision of the first Nicene uh, Council, the first ecumenical council, which was quite clear. And uh, if I may add uh, to what you said, uh, one of the decisions after the, uh, the end of the uh, first ecumenical council was to delegate the Church of Alexandria, where the basic astronomic, uh, scientific uh, resources were located uh, to indicate uh, the exact date every year according to which all Christians, those in Asia Minor who used to celebrate uh, on a fixed day on the 14th of uh, Nisan, Nisan yeah. uh, following the so-called uh, Jewish tradition, mm -hmm. Uh, and the Westerners, the, the Church of Rome, which used to celebrate on Easter. Now, the reason why that decision was made uh, was clear, to follow the scientific and only the scientific results. Now, what happened and uh, after the estrangement between East and West, and after not the schism, because in this series of uh, lectures we have all realized that there was not a canonical or ecclesiastical schism, but it was uh, a separation um, which was caused by other reasons, not theological. Theological reasons were added uh, later. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I was eager to see why that happened. And uh, in uh, a similar uh, um, webinar presentation last year, we have uh, discovered that, uh, uh, and we have to acknowledge this, there are some traditionalists fundamentalist Orthodox who oppose to follow a calendar with the name of a Westerner, a Pope, the Gregorian calendar, and stick to a calendar which is after the name of a Gentile um, emperor who actually persecuted Christians. But Going further and further, I, we re, I realized that uh, unfortunately for many centuries, especially in the second half of the second millennium, uh, we Orthodox have unconsciously developed a negative Orthodox identity. We are not what the Bible and our tradition, the decisions of the ecumenical councils have left us as a legacy but what the others, mainly the Catholics in this present uh, uh, case, the, those who follow uh, um, the Gregorian calendar, and also against their understanding of primacy. So we were 
in effect uh, um, uh, against uh, those who um, have some other understanding of church government and for pastoral uh, cases and liturgical, like the uh, common celebration of Pascha. So we have uh, abandoned the importance, not theologically, but uh, uh, among some quarters within the so-called autocephalous churches that do not want to have uh, um, fully understand and accept uh, the, necess the necessity of a primacy, which is the visible expression of the church's unity, of course, accompanied by synodality. And uh, since I have uh, mentioned this, uh, we cannot uh, ignore the, uh, uh, the effort the present Pope and the Catholic Church uh, are doing for in a process of uh, re visiting and renewing the authentic synodality, which will also help uh, uh, all the churches of Christ, both Eastern and Western. So this is uh, the idea which is, go, which go, which is behind uh, this uh, um, reservation to follow um, um, uh, a new way of celebrating um, together with Eastern Christians, uh, the great feast of Christianity, the main feast, uh, which is the um, resurrection of Christ, on which uh, we base, especially in the East, uh, because we celebrate it more joyfully than even the Western uh, Christianity, this feast, uh, but not in accordance with uh, what uh, the tradition of the Orthodox Church, of the tradition of the undivided Church, uh, the decision of the uh, First Ecumenical Council um, uh, has demanded. In other words, follow the exact, the, the, the accurate uh, astronomical or scientific uh, um, calculation. And of course, uh, following what is very clear. We understand Everybody understands, this is what we said uh, last year, as I said, that uh, uh, everybody, not the scientists, but everybody knows where a full moon is. We all know when the uh, uh, day and night uh, uh, have equinox. equal um, time, where is the uh, equinox, the vernal. But despite this, uh, sometimes, and last year was very, very um, regrettable, we celebrate it not after the first full moon, but after the second full moon, after the vernal equinox. Of course, this uh, year uh, is only just uh, one week later, but still it is um, uh, an erroneous uh, calculation. Uh, now, I was uh, very, um, I, I regretted very much uh, why the churches, at least uh, in the East, but I have a feeling that also in the West, they were not so um, um, uh, joyful to follow the Aleppo uh, calculation, which is the a different from the both uh, um, uh, Julian and the uh, Gregorian calendar, which was a new, uh, more scientific calculation, because we all know that uh, 13 days is not uh, uh, any longer um, the accurate um, uh, calendar. It's day, I mean, year by year, it will reach in a few years uh, 14 days and not 13 only. So we need a new calendar. And uh, uh, I am uh, of the opinion that all this uh, were started because of the, um, the class that has happened 
in the middle of uh, last uh, millennium uh, in the area where the present terrible and disastrous war is taking place between in, 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 the, in the area of the Russian-Ukrainian um, uh, territory. There, it was uh, uh, a place where the two spiritual and uh, um, other uh, uh, traditions, East and West, uh, uh, were found in a kind of uh, confrontation. And uh, fortunately, after the granting of photocephaly in the um, uh, Orthodox Church uh, in Ukraine, of Ukraine, uh, we uh, realize that there is uh, uh, an optimistic uh, uh, occasion that uh, this can bring together these two streams. And only if we uh, follow uh, the command of our Lord that we may all be one and not the confrontation and the um, um, disagreement on minor issues uh, will prevent us at least in three years not only celebrate but go beyond the common celebration which actually as uh, uh, his eminence uh, indicated that we will celebrate together accidentally but we need to go further and try during these three years for pastoral, for ecumenical, for other reasons to uh, do something more and uh, forget about our enmity between East and West and try to, found, to find ways and uh, solution to be close and faithful to the Jesus Christ order demand that we may all be one. This is my short comment. It may not be very short, but uh, uh, if I can uh, uh, have some more time later, I can uh, add some other uh, issues. Thank you very much again, both um, the uh, coordinator, uh, and we are grateful that the uh, World Council of Churches is uh, uh, participating fully in this kind of uh, our uh, concern and uh, His Eminence uh, 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 Archbishop of uh, Tel Mesos uh, for the wonderful presentation. I don't think anyone will find uh, a, a single uh, word from his presentation that he will be or she will be uh, against. Thank you. Thank you very much. Archbishop Shabu, do you like to respond to the comments made by Professor Basquiadis? Well, I, I, I agree fully with uh, Professor Vasiliadis. Maybe I just uh, thought that I would uh, must add one, uh, one thing that I omitted to say during my presentation. As you have seen in uh, my presentation, we can say that since 1977, everything is ready. The Orthodox Church is ready to reform the calendar. And with this new Paschalion, which was uh, uh, prepared by the Orthodox astronomers based on the rule of Nicaea, on the principle of the First Ecumenical Council, then if we accept it, there would be no uh, difference in the date of Easter. We would have a common celebration of the date of Easter. So most of you uh, probably will ask, well, if everything is ready since 1977, why not? Why not? Well, um, as you remember in the quote from the very, the very first quote from the encyclical of uh, ecumenical patriarch Joachim III, uh, he was suggesting, suggesting that we need a pan-orthodox 
uh, resolution. So this is why this question was supposed to be discussed at the Holy and Great Council, which finally happened in 2016. But why then this question was not studied? Well, because prior to the synaxis, prior to the Holy and Great Council of 2016, there was a synaxis, a meeting of all the heads, the primates of the local Orthodox churches. And it was the, the, the Orthodox Church of Russia saying that we are not ready for pastoral reasons to discuss this question at the Council. And if we are not ready pastorally, we, uh, are, uh, we are afraid that this will uh, create more schisms in the Church. And then it was decided at the synaxis of January 2016 to postpone this question to a later council. So the, 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 the topic, the theme was uh, taken away from the agenda of the Holy and Great Council. And as you know, the history, uh, finally, the Orthodox Church of Russia with three other local churches didn't come to the Holy and Great Council. Um, so, technically speaking, we need another uh, Holy and Great Council to, uh, to take this move to revise the calendar and to approve the new Paschali. Now, the argument, the argument uh, given by s some bishops that pastorally we are not ready and therefore uh, this decision could create a new schism. Well, uh, to this remark, I am asking another question. What do you do in order to prepare your people for such a reform? What do you do for pastoral preparation for the question of the calendar? Well, in order to prepare the faithful, in order to have uh, the, 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 the appropriate pastoral preparation for a reform of the calendar, uh, we need to teach. We need to, to explain the questions, and this is precisely what we are doing today. If you explain that we do not have a common date of Easter, uh, not because that we have some theological differences, but only because your calendar is behind the reality, well, then it's, it's just a very simple question. For example, if your clock is 10 minutes behind, well, you have to just to, 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 to revise the time and, and set it at the appropriate time and stop coming late to, to meetings. So it's, it's not a theological issue. It's just a question, a technical question. Uh, this is may what I, I... Want to add. Uh, may I add, because uh, I yes, am not sure whether you have uh, um, uh, said it, uh, but uh, even uh, the Serbian astronomer who introduced this new calendar, as we can, new Julian calendar, his church, uh, the Serbian church, uh, didn't accept and follow uh, this new uh, proposed by uh, one of his uh, members. And uh, the problem with us, uh, and this is why I say uh, that uh, uh, the understanding of, uh, of primacy, uh, it's very important. This is accompanied by, I mean, the uh, uh, rejection or the um, disagreement by certain churches, not all of them, Orthodox churches, because the majority accept uh, the uh, uh, the role of the first in uh, in rank uh, the ecumenical patriarch as being the the head of the orthodox church uh, which will keep uh, the visible expression of the church's unity now they have also introduced uh, a mis uh, uh, misused uh, uh, understanding of consensus which they try to uh, uh, say that uh, uh, consensus means uh, unanimity. And uh, the World Council of Churches has worked uh, a lot uh, about uh, 
uh, revising uh, the the kind of uh, uh, discussion and uh, decision, decision making, making process yes, in yes. the World Council of Churches, but mm -hmm. not uh, identifying consensus with unanimity. And this is why the the patriarch said that uh, if we accept this understanding that even if one disagrees, then we cannot uh, take a decision. This is a Damoclius pathy, <laughs> he said, uh, which may uh, almost destroy all our effort to present the unity of our church and say to the world that we are the church of the Holy uh, Councils. Uh, and this is uh, another difficulty together with the fundamentalist ideas that uh, exist not only in the Orthodox Church, but mainly in, in uh, some parts of our churches, that uh, we do not uh, uh, be, we are not ready uh, to follow what uh, our tradition, our uh, uh, ecumenical council decision has taught us. So this is what I wanted to add uh, to what uh, his eminence said. Now we can, of course, uh, uh, have uh, a replacement or a proxy of uh, uh, his eminent uh, he's, Vasilius. He's with us. He's, he's with us. Yes. He's, he's out with us. Yes. Yes. He's with okay. us. Okay. Yeah. Then we have also yes. Father Augustinus. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I was going to say before moving to uh, Metropolitan Vasilius, I was going to say that, so is there a kind of a psychological uh, perception or blockage that uh, the new Pascalian would mean the Gregorian calendar? So it's, uh, in other words, and, for, and that would be a kind of, uh, yeah, sort of traumatic uh, uh, or... Uh, a blocking uh, element in the, in the in the process, <laughs> right? Uh, um, we have uh, Dimitrius has raised his hand. Uh, I would like to move to Metropolitan Vasilius, but uh, maybe before the meet. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Metropolitan. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're on the faculty. Sorry. Yeah, you are on the faculty of uh, of the program, and you are, uh, the, as I, I informed in the beginning, former moderator of the Commission Faith and Order of the WCC. Uh, would you like to share your 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 comments uh, in relation to the presentation made by Archbishop Job now? Okay, um, I'm very sorry I joined you late, and I, I was not able to follow. Uh, uh, the presentation of his seminars, but uh, as I, I'm older than his seminars, I I remember the discussion, the pre-conciliar discussion about the common uh, feast of Easter, um, which was one of the uh, topics included to the minutes of the uh, Pan-Orthodox. Uh, council. And uh, of course, um, some uh, Orthodox churches, uh, they developed the argument that uh, we know that uh, the way we calculate Easter is a mistake, is mistaken, but uh, this is now our tradition. And once we try to change we provoke more problems within the Orthodox churches than with the other uh, Christian churches. I remember uh, it, uh, also that we had the message at that time from Vatican that whatever the, uh, the Orthodox yes. could decide, we are ready to follow. And it was already a list of Pascalia for two centuries, I, if I remember well. Uh, and it, the, the main point it was that it was taken the astronomic uh, uh, counting of the Easter, not one uh, outside uh, of any other country, but Jerusalem. So this could be fitting in a certain way and also psychologically uh, could play a role. 
for uh, accepting this um, uh, correction of the uh, calculation of the Easter of, uh, of, of, of the of East of Easter. But unfortunately, the, this was even not uh, that was accepted. And as you know, uh, after, uh, after that, uh, this topic was put out from uh, uh, the agenda of the uh, Creative Council of the Orthodox Churches. Uh, just, uh, 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 sorry, I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed, but um, I'm working now uh, about uh, St. Epiphanius, my long, long time predecessor uh, of Constantia. And there is a very important text, a letter of him, and he's calculating um, the day of the death of Christ, the day of resurrection, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, in one uh, um, phrase, he's referring to the decision of the first ecumenical council, uh, just not to follow the quadro, how you say this, the uh, Sarasque de Catites, quadro decimans. Quadro decimans. But uh, the, uh, especially, he said, that the day of the resurrection, that uh, the, the day was 12 hours and the night 12 hours. That means it was e equal the e equinox of uh, um, uh, spring. Um, and this, uh, you see, uh, this tradition was there. I, I mean, this practice, not only tradition, this practice was there for the churches. And unfortunately, uh, the calendar, which changed uh, little by little, we have to the we came to this uh, different calculation, which is dividing um, the Christianity. These days, we are at, we are preparing a, a conference about the uh, cult of the cross in Cyprus, but we enlarge the topic also to see uh, Jerusalem, Constantinople, uh, Armenia, Georgia, and even Western countries uh, and Catholics. Uh, we have also in Cyprus Catholic and Armenian Maronite communities. So I, I, I phrase just saying the cross which unites uh, the divided Christians. Uh, this is our cross to carry. Thank you very much. Dimitrius, you had uh, raised your hand and uh, so, sorry, now with, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon, <clears throat> again from, from Rome. Uh, actually, if I may say so, I am uh, an example of this <laughs> double celebration of, of, of Easter uh, being what His Eminence described uh, as a mixed family. So this year I will again celebrate twice the, the Easter. Uh, I think that uh, the, the question is as old as the preparation of the Holy Council of, which took place in Crete. So actually the idea was to uh, urge Christ, Orthodox Christians to celebrate together and with other Christians the Easter, the resurrection of, pride, of Christ. And it was exactly that topic that didn't uh, reach the Council of, of Crete, ironically. Uh, yet I think the Orthodox reactions to the, uh, to the uh, update of the liturgical calendar uh, were not opposition to science, but uh, the background, there was an anti-ecumenical attitude. For example, in Greece, the group that did not accept it in 1923 to uh, adopt the new calendar was that old calendaristic group that uh, opposed to the, uh, 
the context with Western Christianity. And I think uh, uh, there was, uh, that was the topic of, uh, of the research that late Archbishop of Athens, Christodoulos, did uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, it has been published. Uh, so if there is a difficulty within the Orthodox Church to find a solution to the issue, uh, the, the topic, the same topic was also studied by the North American Orthodox Ca Catholic Consultation, which has issued two documents, one after the Aleppo consultation and another, if I'm not wrong, in uh, 2010, uh, speaking of the necessity to find the solution for pastoral reasons, pastoral reasons to this problem, I think if the Orthodox are, uh, are unable, or at least some of the Orthodox churches are unable to, uh, to see positively and walk and teach their people, uh, prepare the people, change the calendar, uh, we should do what Orthodox of Finland do, that is they celebrate Easter together with the Catholics, or what Catholics in Greece do, they celebrate Easter together with Orthodox. I mean, we could find local solutions, especially in the so-called diaspora. So this could be uh, a way to prepare the people uh, to celebrate together with other Christians in the Easter, which is the main Christian feast, and tra transmit this experience to the mother uh, autocephalous churches. So I think that the role in this case of the diaspora in preparing, in changing this mentality is, is very important because it's exactly the Christians living in the so-called diaspora that have a direct encounter with, uh, with uh, Christians of other denominations. So we should change the approach, not for the mother of the Cephalus churches, but from the periphery from diaspora towards the mother out of Cephalus uh, churches. So that would be my approach to that, uh, to that uh, issue. Of course, one could see also a debate on relation uh, regarding the relation between faith and science or theology and science, which has been reproduced during these two last years of, the, of, of, of where we, accounting the pandemic uh, situation. But uh, in order to find a solution of, of the problem, which is a necessity, an ecumenical and pastoral necessity, we should uh, perhaps change the approach, starting from the diaspora towards the mother of the Cephalus churches. Again, thank you, your Eminence, for your presentation and your uh, reflection on that issue. Thank you very much, Dimitrius. I would like uh, perhaps to add at this point uh, a quick note just to underline uh, the fact that uh, on the side of the World Council of Churches and particularly on the side of the Faith and Order Commission, there is a long standing uh, commitment as it has been referred in passing by some of you uh, to this issue. And just to add some, some, some references to help you to uh, take the measure of this ancient uh, commitment. Uh, the the first, uh, let's say, the first moment of this uh, uh, engagement of faith and order with the issue was in the mid-60s, and I suppose that uh, immediately after Vatican II and under the impact of the new ecumenical reality opened by, inaugurated by the, the Second uh, Vatican Council, uh, the, the Commission launched an inquiry in, uh, uh, among the, the member churches of the WCC on, on the question, whether asking them whether they would be in favor uh, uh, of uh, adopting a, a, a common date. Uh, so the, uh, many churches responded, but uh, no further work was done until uh, 1970, it's five years later then, when uh, the commission organized a consultation in Chambézy which has been an important venue for discussions on this issue uh, uh, to analyze uh, the, the results of, of that. And um, uh, um, 
one of the conclusions was that uh, the, the request to the WCC to to to, to take a, a, a decision uh, uh, recommending member churches something in that direction. This was discussed then in the assembly of the WCC in Nairobi in 1975, and it's in that assembly that the Orthodox uh, delegates. Uh, adopt uh, a kind of statement saying that for them it was impossible to uh, support at that point uh, the, 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 any proposal uh, in the absence of uh, a, a general pan-orthodox uh, decision. So the question stays there and then two years later you have the astronomers uh, meeting in, uh, in Chambesi. The new uh, a moment for the, for the common date comes in the 90s and uh, it comes in, in connection with uh, faith and order studies uh, on, uh, on worship, like uh, consultation Christian spirituality for our times in Yashi, Romania, and then another one in England towards Koinonia in worship. And in, in that context emerges again uh, the, the call to, 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 to work on that. And this leads to the Aleppo consultation that has been uh, mentioned uh, uh, in our conversations and presented by Archbishop uh, Job. The assembly of the WCC that came after that in uh, Harare in 98 didn't take any special recommendation on this as far as I remember. So uh, we are now opening the third wave of efforts <laughs> as we uh, as the Faith and Order Commission uh, uh, decided in its uh, meeting in China in, uh, uh, three years ago to call a world conference um, in connection with the anniversary of the First Ecumenical Council. And we, with the same determination, the same hope, the same perseverance, we hope that uh, to, to, to work in such a way that we'll move uh, will be ready to join efforts and uh, and to pray and work for for the moment in which uh, uh, this will be possible so this is a quick overview of uh, what has happened uh, on the side of faith and order if we don't have any other comment or questions then i would uh, turn to professor vasiliadis or unless we have questions coming from uh, YouTube or, or Metropolitan. Yes, Metropolitan. Um, I will be a little critical to my tradition uh, uh, because uh, last year when we had Easter, because of the COVID, there was a decision to celebrate Easter earlier than uh, 12 in, in the midnight because it was not allowed to circulate after midnight. It was the uh, lockdown. And we had many reactions that is not possible to celebrate Easter before midnight. That means we are a typical address. We cult the typos and not the, 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 the real meaning. I had a phone call from a, a friend who passed away from COVID, protesting, saying uh, uh, at least somebody in this Synod of Cyprus, somebody could speak uh, wisely. They said to him, listen, Father, tell me, the Easter celebrated uh, 12 hours before us in Australia is a mistake, or when our uh, Orthodox churches in the United States celebrating 12 hours after us, is it a mistake? Why you stick on the tribos and you don't see what is the real event of the resurrection? I, I am afraid because of these reactions, uh, uh, if we had a, a hope during the discussions in Geneva, and uh, that this could be a possible, now I see that we go steps back um, because of this increase in, I don't know, I, 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 it is not a, only a question of anti-ecumenism. 
it's a question that um, the consensus fidelium is guided by many and they don't see the health uh, belief and the health uh, celebration of our Easter. This is for me is very disappointing. Thank you very much. May I continue? Uh, I think you should continue because I, uh, from my part, we come to more or less to the end of the of the discussion, unless uh, um, Archbishop Job would like to add uh, any other comment. Augustinus had indicated that he wanted to, yes, he's here. Augustinus would like to, to, to make a point and then I will turn to, to Professor Vasiliadis. Augustinus. Good afternoon yes. to all and thank you for uh, uh, all there for the introduction, uh, Your Eminence, for your wonderful um, uh, explaining a uh, presentation, explaining anything uh, and all related to that issue. Just the, uh, I don't know if you mentioned something about that, about, I mean, the comment that I would like to, to add in your wonderful um, conversation, but I had to, to go and uh, pick up my daughter from the ballet <laughs> lesson. So probably you said, uh, so I, what I would like to highlight is that the first Christian communities in East and West, uh, when they actually tried to, regu to, to, to discuss and uh, resolve the, the issue of the common celebration of the Feast of Eastern, so the, uh, the accepted uh, in the end, the, the fact equally both local traditions to celebrate Eastern uh, in different uh, chronological dates without compromising yet, uh, though, the issue of uh, unity. So that was not a reason to break up their community. Besides the fact that they were celebrating the, the, the date of uh, Jesus' resurrection in different time. So uh, I was wondering what has changed in the meantime in East and West in Catholics, um, Protestants and Christian mindset because probably we lack in the spirit of uh, reconciliation and acceptance the difference in a certain way. Uh, so the, the spirit of reconciliation is quite clear existing back in, uh, in these uh, first, let's say so, uh, Christian local communities. Uh, and once more, it is proved that the, 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 the sense and the, what we call as consensus does not mean unanimity. So they had this, let's say, um, uh, wide way of thinking and accepting uh, different local traditions, uh, not only in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, in a, on an important also theological issues, not only um, in uh, other uh, questions. So briefly, the question is, uh, addressed to your eminence. Uh, is, uh, can East and West build together their common future starting from the um, common celebration of Easter? And I, I think that partially you have answered that. But uh, anyway, I would like to have your comment on that. If you believe that the common celebration of Jesus' resurrection could be the starting point of a common route towards the, the unity for Christendom. And also how much tradition and how much of faith do you think that unity does it need more? And I think, and with this one, last one, I would like to end my uh, short comment. I think it's time to praise commonly Lord and stop setting God into our humans limitations of thinking and the, 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 the consumptions that we have as communities. And uh, probably big, uh, as an Orthodox church, we have a wrong understanding and perception of what does it mean reformation. 
because in certain ways, uh, I think it would be very helpful for the Orthodox Church to do some kind of uh, updating in their pastoral treatment and pastoral theological style, because as uh, you said, we know that it's wrong, but still we do it. But once something is wrong and you make it all the time, does not make it correct. So we keep doing the wrong thing. So wh wh what is the reason behind of that, um, of that uh, treatment, let's say, of that issue on behalf of the Orthodox Church? So thank you very much for your hospitality and for your time. Thank you. Job, we still have time for some yes. final comments. Please. Yes, well, I would like to say three things. Uh, first of all, um, we often say unity in diversity. Okay, uh, of course, the, the, the ancient church uh, tolerated uh, different ways of celebrating Easter until the first ecumenical council. The first ecumenical council introduced a common date for all abiding for all Christians. And this common way of determining the day of Easter is still the way used as a, that was the, my point in my presentation. We all use the same rule. We all use the same definition. So the problem is not in the definition. The problem is in the tools we use, in the, in the data. That's the first point I want to say. Now, second point, the data. Uh, the first ecumenical council referred to astronomic phenomena, the equinox. The equinox is when the day has 12 hours and the night has 12 hours. So the day is of the same length as the night. This is something we can observe. Now, the full moon also is something you can observe. So, uh, you see, we speak a lot today, Christians speak a lot today about ecology, about creation. I think we need to live more in communion with the creation. We have to observe these phenomena. The equinox is not something, uh, it's not an abstract idea that you find in the table or in a calendar. The equinox, you can observe it. It's when the night is as long as the day. The full moon is not some a data, an abstract data that you find in a, a, a table or in a book. The full moon, you see it during the night on on, 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 on the sky. So let us live a little bit more in connection with the reality of nature. By the way, I had a wonderful professor when I was a student at St. Sergius Institute, uh, who then became my colleague when I started teaching there. And every year he was inviting the students to observe the full moon during the spring. And you, he was using to, to say to the students, do you see the full moon? Yes, we see it. Why we are not celebrating Easter next Sunday? <laughs> see, these are things we observe. And my third point, I, I want to, to come back to the comment made by Dimitrios and by His Eminence Metropolitan Vasilios. Dimitrios spoke about the anti-ecumenists. I remember very well when I made once a presentation about these things in a parish. I had a reaction from a lady, a parishioner, who reacted to my speech saying, but how is it possible to celebrate Easter together with the Roman Catholics? So the, her problem was celebrating together with other Christians. Well, if this is a problem, then we have to solve this problem, you see? So there is, of course, an anti, sometimes you see a problem because of anti-ecumenism, but I agree with Metropolitan Vasilios that the reason of anti-ecumenism does not reside in anti-ecumenism, 
but it's linked with fundamentalism. So we have to address the issue of religious fundamentalism because all this opposition for uh, liturgical uh, calendar reform, what we are changing is not the dogma of faith. It's not even the decision of the council. We are just updating our tables to reflect the reality to which was referring the Ecumenical Council uh, of Nicaea. So uh, therefore, we are not changing neither the faith, neither the order. We are just updating the data to the reality. And therefore, if you are not, if you do not accept this, then you have a problem of, you are a fundamentalist. And we have to address this issue of fundamentalism. But this is an issue that we find not only in the Orthodox Church. Oh, fundamentalism oh, oh, is a very ecumenical problem. Oh, it's a good Protestant invention too. And uh, yes, good, I mean, ironically speaking. May. Thank you very much. I turn to uh, Professor Vasiliadis with my uh, gratitude and thanks for this, uh, for the opportunity and privilege of being with uh, you all. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like uh, to continue the comment, the last comment uh, by His Eminence uh, Archbishop uh, Job, uh, together with a tribute to the World Council of Churches and to our uh, present uh, moderator by reminding what we have said, uh, what we said last year concerning the Aleppo uh, World Council of Churches and uh, the Middle, Castle, Middle East, East Council, Council of Churches yeah. jointly, uh, that consultation. They made uh, three important issues, and by this I would like to close uh, uh, tonight's very important uh, um, uh, event. Uh, the first one was uh, that um, last year we um, the the event we and the discussion we had in Greek uh, coincided uh, with the the publication by His uh, Eminence uh, Archbishop Job the uh, the 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 article about uh, the common celebration of Easter. And immediately there was, by the fundamentalists from all over the world, including immediately by the um, by Arch by uh, Metropolitan of Volokolamsk, but also by the Metropolitan of Piraeus, uh, against this. This is why this kind of fundamentalism is uh, uh, a very uh, important issue we have to solve. But the most important issue, which I would like to Comment, further comment was the understanding of the um, the the nature and uh, <clears throat> what he said about uh, uh, his uh, former um, teacher and uh, colleague uh, in uh, introducing the the students to the uh, full moon. The important uh, 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 recommendation uh, Halepo consultation made uh, in in addition to the third scientific, uh, uh, in addition to the Gregorian and uh, uh, Julian calendar, was uh, that the first church uh, should not forget its origins by including the close connection between the biblical, in other words, Jewish Passover, and the passion and the resurrection of Christ. And this had some interfaith dialogue uh, um, connotation. This connection reflects the overall course of the history of salvation, in other words, of the divine economy, in addressing a movable day and not a fixed one, as suggested by some, uh, sometimes by s some people um, who wanted uh, to have a common celebration. This link and reference to biblical standards for calculating Easter is strengthened. And the most important, which I would like to say and close this. Secondly, and finally, the cosmic dimension of the Christian Easter should not be overlooked, the Aleppo consultation said. Through Christ's resurrection, the sun, the moon, and all the cosmic elements are restored to their original integrity 
in order to declare the glory of God, quoting the Psalms uh, 148, how clearly the sky reveals God's glory, how plainly it shows that he has done. And this is Psalm 19, and then praise him, sun, praise him, shining stars, the Psalm 148. These are very important, while at the same time, the close relationship between creation and recreation, that is incarnation and redemption, are revealed as inseparable aspects of the divine revelation. This should be unfortunately, uh, this was unfortunately not, this were recommendations that were unfortunately, uh, were not uh, elaborated further by the churches uh, because these findings are very important and uh, uh, this I think will help uh, us further um, <clears throat> be concerned about the uh, creation and recreation of our Lord and in celebrating also uh, the uh, Pascha together. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all. Thank you Odair for um, moderating this uh, and pleasure. for this uh, beautiful uh, uh, conference and all those who have made comments, our Metropolitan Vasilius and uh, uh, our colleagues uh, in uh, the SEMES, uh, um, Professor Father uh, Augustinus uh, uh, Bariachtaris and uh, Dimitrios Kiaramidas. Good night to you all. And thank, thank you very you much. much. Thank, thank you. you for you all. Thank Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. You. Have a good afternoon. Happy Easter. Happy <laughs>